let's put on every sound and everything. I hope I don't forget anything. Okay, we are on. We're here. And it works. <laughs> here they are. Yeah, Talon Lord sees us, so this, this would be good. I hope he says something if, if someone is not to be heard or something like that. So, yeah. We have one control group there. That's good. <laughs> all right. So let's start with the Q&A of EOS. And uh, first of all, I think everyone can uh, introduce themselves. So what they do, where they're from and something like that. So just a short introduction and then we can dive right into the questions. So let's begin with uh, Lance. but I'm here to answer any questions that might be Gray Fox related or EOS related or anything else. So there you go. Happy to be here. Perfect. And now everyone can hear you because for, before it was muted. Damn it. Technical issues. Oh, should I say it again? <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> it's no trouble. <laughs> okay. All right. Same energy. The same, yeah. energy. <laughs> same words. No, no, no. All right, no, no. Uh, everybody, my name is my name is Lance Meister. Um, uh, in the board game world, I'm also known as the Undead Viking. I have I've had a YouTube channel for over a decade. Um, because I did that, I started getting work in the board game hobby, and now I work for Gray Fox Games. Um, I basically run projects for them, uh, do play testing, do game development. I do everything, uh, and. Um, we at Gray Fox Games are super excited to be partnered up uh, with King Raccoon once again uh, and uh, just to bring EOS to everybody and I'm here to answer any and all questions you may have about anything board game related. Perfect, thank you very much. Felix? Yeah, hi, I'm Felix Mertikat, a game designer of EOS and Tsukuyumi, also co-founder of King Raccoon Games. And uh, my favorite color is orange, and I don't accept any questions what my favorite cactus is. And I totally uh, enjoy uh, developing EOS for three years, but I'm more excited about the questions today. All right. Thank you very much, Felix. Then we come to Maxine. Hey, um, my name is Maxine, Maxine Metzger. I am also a co-founder of King Raccoon Games. Um, so. Felix and I have been doing this together for how long? Like four years now. Um, I guess five. Something like that. Yeah. And um, I mostly do like graphics stuff on what we do, but because we're a small studio, we basically all help each other out wherever it works out. So yeah. And I'm excited about this today and glad you're all here. Perfect. Thank you very much, Maxine. So we go to uh, Dennis. Yeah, hi, I'm Dennis um, from the German YouTube channel Brettspielsuchtis. And yeah, we do lots of uh, reviews, previews, um, Kickstarter stuff, of course. <laughs> so I already played um, EOS in the tabletop version and uh, the prototype. So yeah, very excited to be here and uh, ask some questions. Perfectly. Thank you very much, Dennis. So we come to Tim. Yeah, um, hi everybody, my name is Tim. I'm a board game reviewer from uh, the website Teilzeit Helden, um, a website um, reviewing all stuff uh, related to fantasy, uh, board games, pen and paper, uh, uh, novels, etc. And um, I was also a part of a testing group um, for EOS for a long while now, and uh, also got a prototype, and I'm really hyped for the finished product now. Perfect. Thank you very much, Tim. Uh, all right. Short introduction for me. I'm Lisandras. I'm working uh, with King Raccoon uh, on the game EOS uh, since I think uh, start of the year. And uh, I'm mostly doing marketing stuff and co. I have my own uh, channel, as you see right now, which I've uh, used to, uh, which I'm very glad to, to host this uh, Q&A today. And uh, yeah, I mostly do marketing stuff, other stuff, testing, a lot, of, a lot of prototype testing. And yeah, a lot of contact with reviewers and stuff, as uh, Dennis and Tim already know. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm uh, helping out wherever I can in this uh, regarding in these matters. And I'm now here to moderate a little bit um, this Q&A for EOS Island of Angels. All right. Yeah. Nice. You're making us happy. 
<laughs> Perfect. So uh, I think let's just start with the questions right away. And I think uh, from left to right, as I see it, uh, I start with Dennis. <laughs> and Dennis can maybe ask your first question and we just go with it. Um, yeah, I have seen that um, the board has some differences. Is it just a um, visual look with the compass? Or does it have a um, meaning or new meaning since uh, the prototype version? Oh, well, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll let Felix uh, answer that one. So yeah, yeah I okay. guess uh, because, Felix, because yeah. I, I, okay, I can I can go. Um, well, actually, it's one of the most important thing. It looks amazing, and it's <laughs> also like. Uh, has a great board experience, uh, like a, a, a game ta uh, oh, table uh, presence. <laughs> and um, also, it feels way more natural having not these four starting areas, but having like an around map for, for the Island of Angels. And you can now just go around the island, which feels way more um, intuitive than having a square map. But apart from that, we are thinking about maybe assigning demon lords to the four um, orientations but that's just an idea that came up in the kickstarter we will check on this but yeah that's actually the, the reason it looks amazing it's fun and it's way more intuitive uh, with this kind of topic and also with the movement mm -hmm. but i think uh, it didn't change much about the the previous um, map layout Itself. No, uh, it doesn't yeah. change at all. It's, yeah. it's exactly the same, it's the same layout. It's just the, the, the areas now, the, the, you know, in a, in, a, in a square map, I had to stretch out the, the areas at the, at, the, at the corners so much to to go around the island in the, in the round version. All of them could be nearly the same size and just go around the island, which is an improvement for having the same size, not small and huge parts so, but it's the same layout it didn't change anything here can i ask a it, question about that sure sure <laughs> i mean it, no, no, i just is it is it going to be like a quad folded board or is is the the box going to be big enough that you're just going to fold it once or i'm just curious I, i'm just i mean i'm not or is it going to be a puzzle board which which you no the you plan just... the plan is for it to be folded twice so it's like yeah so quad fold okay okay cool all That's right it's also now a, a difference between the board uh, or, or the prototype board because it was a big board and now you have these um, different um, yeah like like little pieces you can set them on the table like you want it's a good idea I guess also <laughs> yeah we thought it's easier for people if they can arrange it on their table yeah. depending on a wider table a round table it just makes it easier it's more flexible mm. all right perfect so next Who's question? The next question yeah from Tim yeah um oh, he's, so he's ready. <laughs> yeah i'm uh, absolutely ready for you guys uh, yeah, uh, uh another question regarding the game board um so i think it was just today when the stretch goal with a double-sided game board was um unlocked so um what is the um the big difference between uh the both uh both sides uh, i thought the um the new background side has a more like a darker tone does it um have something to do with an increased difficulty or uh, even better demon lords or something well the demon lords won't change but mm -hmm. um felix got to create a new art i don't know if you already have ideas for that felix but we just basically thought it's going to be a little darker in theme and maybe have um higher risk higher re reward um things happening on the board so that it's a little more um, just like a different game mode so that you can choose whichever you prefer more. Oh, that sounds exciting. Really exciting. And um, how do you uh, expect this to work out for the uh, playmat? Does um, it come as a double, double side printed playmat? It does now. Oh. <laughs> now oh. that we unlock the stretch goal, this is going to be double sided too, which is really cool because now everybody who was planning on getting the play mat, it will be double sided. Oh, I'm very happy that I just increased my play. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I, I have the first question from the community from the chat. 
Um, and mm. uh, the first question was like, um, will there be any more factions like the ones we already know? I think this question goes uh, mostly we, to Felix. <laughs> uh, we uh, we decided right like two days before the Kickstarter to introduce a seventh faction. Mm -hmm. So Tim and Dennis, I'm pretty sure you haven't seen the seventh faction at all at the moment, because mm -hmm. we just introduced it two two days before the Kickstarter. And so for now, and I think for the for the nearest future, the seven factions will be the total for for now. But of course, as you know, King of Coon Games, we already have an undefined number of additional factions in the making. <laughs> but not for this Kickstarter, just to be clear. All right. But Felix does have ideas for more factions. Yeah, should, should, I, should, I, <laughs> should I spoil them a bit? Like, like Because, you know, mm -hmm. Maxine really had a great idea for, for a new faction. No, I shouldn't? Okay, don't, I should. Yeah, no, you should. <laughs> <laughs> just spoil it a little bit. Uh, we don't want to hear about it. A little it. bit. <laughs> about it already. Good ideas are always nice to hear. Uh, I, I love surprises, so I just uh, shook my head, but okay. <laughs> okay no, no, okay, no, the chat also says we are here for spoilers, a little spoilers. Okay, so, okay, so I go in between, I make, a, I make it a small riddle, and you can have your imagine. It's a faction that will most of the time play underwater. Hmm. The divers. <laughs> the Aquaman faction are nice. <laughs> the Aquaman faction, yes. <laughs> it's actually shells. <laughs> <laughs> or it could be a coral reef. You never know. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a coral reef action. Yeah, <laughs> oh, we know. Some, <laughs> something is sounds no, familiar. No, no more spoilers. No more spoilers. It's no more spoilers. play underwater. <laughs> yeah, chat says yeah. dolphins. Dolphins to the rescue is also fine. <laughs> oh, I, I mean, I love that. I love that when you get the submarine. There's that one quest that you get the submarine. Yeah. I love. I, I do like that. So. That, that makes me happy because I like getting that submarine. If you mean I can have a faction that's always underwater, hmm. I'd probably take that one every single time. The submarine? It's like the theme of it. Hmm. Wait, guys, I, I show you the submarine, uh, for example. This is the submarine. Yeah, Queen, Queen of the, of deep, the sea. deep Sea. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Because I can switch in the stream between the game, I have the game open on, on Tabletop Simulator. And so I just show a, in, in between, I show a little bit of the game. So, so, the, I, so I, the idea for, for this came from Johannes, uh, our uh, uh, editor. And the inspiration for the design of this came from one of my most favorite uh, movies, Atlantis from Disney. And I make a, a, you know, like I make a tiny, small version of the the Nautilus in, the, in this oh. movie. <laughs> That's nice. cool. The mini Nautilus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So that was it uh, for now from the community. So we switch back to Dennis. <laughs> next question. Please. Um. Next question. Yeah, I have uh, seen. There's a little bit changes on the ships, on the ship cards. Um, what does this mean? These these coins, I guess, to to Felix. I was not sure. Oh, I, I can I have... pass this on to Maxine because. Oh, that's... Maxine. Okay. Yeah. You can. <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> um, um, what, what we did basically <laughs> was, um, was yeah, because Felix made the changes and I yeah, <laughs> didn't do that. <laughs> but um, what we did recently was some streamlining, so to figure out. Um, what is best for the table so we don't have so much material so the space that you need is is optimized um and also the downtime and with all the coins we had a lot of downtime if you like take coins and you give yeah. them away and it's just a lot of work and it takes up time so um we have a new system where we have the coins on the shipboard so you can um indicate with little cubes how much you have and that's a lot quicker than actually like picking out oh i don't have I, I, I do need to exchange some stuff because I only mm. have a five and now I need the one coin coins. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, um, like, uh, Liz is showing in the, uh, in the stream right now that, um, yeah, that's how you do it. <laughs> okay. But uh, these are still, um, cards or do you have double layer boards or something like that where you can put the, or is it in a deluxe version? <laughs> 
for for the ships we planned cards right now okay. because we also want to have um different ships maybe as we just saw the submarine that's going to be a trophy card from the epic battles um mm -hmm. so they can be interchangeable because otherwise if, if one was uh, a board and one was a card that wouldn't really mix so well but mm -hmm. yeah if it does make sense um eventually we might consider it because even if you get another ship, you still keep your starting ship, maybe, because you need that indicator. Yeah, we'll figure it out. It's not completely final. Um, all, all the components are going to be subject to change in case we see that there is going to be a great improvement to be made. Okay. All right. Perfect. Nice. Then I think, uh, Tim, the next question. Yeah. Um, I was just... Uh thinking about uh you just introduced a solo mode um for the game so um what will be the main goal of the solo mode <laughs> to win yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah basically that's it do you need any more information about it <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's okay. no it's okay thank you <laughs> no, i mean what what is um, no, no. the road to vi uh, let's talk yeah. about the road to victory <laughs> Uh, Lance, did you already play this one? Uh, well, I mean, I, I read the rules for it. I, I just honestly, I haven't had time, and I apologize for that. But, um, I mean, you, you, uh, how long have you have you ever made a solo mode before? Uh, you know, for for any of your games before, or I mean, is that was that a challenge for you? I mean, I'm just wondering because I have heard from like previous game developers and designers that like you know trying to convert that, that that's like one of the more challenging things to do. Is, is to is to take an existing game that has always been planned on being a multiplayer game and then condensing the theme and the feel of the game, but just for one person. With EOS, that worked in really interestingly uh, quick as the, the main thing in the game is like organizing your game board anyway and having the most uh, chronicle entries. What, what is lacking, of course, is the interaction. But the interaction, and I analyzed the, how the interaction and the the, um, the challenge is. It's actually for for one player. What is the challenge? And I came up with the idea of having um, this small agenda card and a limited uh, amount of action. So you have twenty actions in total, and you have four points of agenda you have to fulfill in the right order. So there will be ten agenda cards, and let's say the first one is to uh, free an angel the second one is now you have to uh, win an epic battle then you have to free two angels and the last one could be having 150 coins and of course they there, there is a really really small chronicle uh, track for one player and you have 20 actions so it's about optimizing your turns which is a challenge and it's it's not about winning victory points because victory points will not exist in a uh, one player option. Instead, it's about how many of these agenda can you reach in just 20 act activations. And by lowering the actions to 15 or 17 actions or increasing to 25, you can easily adapt the, the, um, the challenge and also the, the difficulty. And that works pretty good, and uh, my my wife Yasmin, which is also like one of the co-authors of the game, because we spent like years now working on it together. She always came up with great ideas. Like the Chronicle uh, track was one of her ideas, for example, and she also said like this new agenda cuts for the for one player game adds a new element to the game because it's more of a narration, and you can you can set uh, a tone like. This is the combat agenda, and you have to uh, use your combat skills to fulfill it. And the other one could be like your merchant skills, where you need a lot of money to. So, so by setting the theme, you also have, add more of the story, and you uh, have more different adventures. It's like a, it's like a, a, a small uh, exploration mode, or uh, having like specific adventures, which I really like the idea. And that's why I for will force this more in this direction. Yeah, and uh, w uh, while I just listened to you, I also have uh, 
like kind of an idea that it could be a perfect way of having a tutorial for each faction like this because uh the solo mode uh sounds like a little bit of um you have the engine building and the worker placement combined with a little bit of puzzle so how do you yeah. achieve best results so uh basically in my opinion this is a perfect way to uh, learn about the, uh, the different factions and uh, how they play out so uh i'm oh, absolutely in would you uh, would you mind um going with me in a brainstorming session about this uh, no <laughs> i don't mind <laughs> because, of because, course uh, I, because i'm really interested in this and maybe we can we can add this together to the game i think sure. it could it could only increase the the player experience so i'm totally in for that Thank you very much for the input here. Yeah, uh, of course. I'm doing what I can. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and to Lance's question before, it wasn't the first time Phoenix made the solo mode because with the Moon Princess, you can play it to be in solo oh, mode. Oh, yeah, that's right. I didn't even think that about that. You're absolutely correct. Absolutely All right. Correct. All right. So nice. There. My question is more than answered. Yeah. <laughs> now we have no, no new work to do. <laughs> nice. A tutorial why not kind of a tutorial game all right um next question comes from the community it was like let me see it was a combined question on how old the game is so starting the development and how we did get the idea or how you guys get the, did get the idea of yeah constructing it uh, working it That's a combined question. Who, who, to, whom did, who, to whom this question goes? I think maybe Maxine can answer I this question. Of course you can. Yeah, I think we both can. <laughs> I think we've, we've been working on EOS specifically for three years now, but it's actually, it, de it kind of developed out of a different game idea that Felix had way earlier. Um, I don't know, when, when did you start working on Calendarium? Uh, 2000. And years ago, <laughs> 2014. <laughs> 2014, all right. <laughs> so, so we had a lot of mechanics that were really nice in that idea, but it had a theme that um, that we expected to not have as many people um, to reach. That the target audience would be rather small. Um, so. With Tsukuyumi, it was always like there was the idea of the story and Felix had this this great plan with all the factions and that the moon crashed into Earth. And with Eos, it was actually the other way around. There were a lot of mechanics and a lot of cool ideas for how the game plays. And we decided to um, pick something that we thought would be cool to, to go with this. And um, in this way, Eos was born from the mechanics and then the story started to, to develop through through the years. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I think that answers the question quite well. Yeah. Okay. Perfectly. Perfect. So, depends on another or did come from another game uh, type or yeah, it was in development for a far long time to be like this, like the game we have right now. All right. Um, I would give the next question to Dennis. So we're going circles. <laughs> yeah. Um, how different are the epic battles? Um, because uh, when we played it, there was some kind of very heavy uh, missions. Like we said, ooh, I don't think I want to do this, but this sounds quite uh, doable. So hard, how different are they and how many are there in your mind still? <laughs> um, I don't know, Felix? I'm yeah, so this is a, this is a, a, a two-point question as um, in the playtesting, we introduced all 20 of the epic adventures at the same time without a level um, system because we, I, you know, the play testings are exact, actually perfect for this to see, okay, which are easy to fulfill, which are heavy to fulfill or, or difficult to fulfill. And so what you played was like, we don't set any rules. We just put everything in. And mm -hmm. having this different uh, levels of difficulty is something we'll address in the final game in a three or maybe a five step difficulty uh, system. So you can start with easy ones in your first game or if you want to have an, an easy going game and you can increase to level three dash five if you want to have 
a way higher difficulty. So mm -hmm. in the end, we will have 20 to 25, but I guess it's will 20 will do it. Uh, will do it here with, because this would be uh, enough. So we have um, on level one, we only have two different types because we want to have the players understand it really quickly that we have two different types of, of uh, uh, epic adventures and the higher the difficulty difficulty becomes each epic adventure it has its own set of rules how to, to fulfill it mm -hmm. okay so we start with two five different in the level five and uh, that's that's we have a lot of and you can if you want you can interchange the levels having one from level five and one from one so you have uh, all types of of uh, the difficulty but i think it's uh, uh interesting um so the player can customize their experience mm -hmm. all right is your nice. two point yep. questions answered dennis yeah perfect i guess <laughs> all right yeah <laughs> thank you <Perfect>. yeah <laughs> good uh and i it's, think and it's, uh, just to add it something we also have the rewards are exactly the same level like on level one your your rewards are really easy rewards you get victory points or an increase mm -hmm. in morale and on higher levels you gain more complex uh, uh, rewards which you have to uh, bring into advancing your engine like mm -hmm. so for example in, on the first level you have uh, two points increase on morale and two points on ranks and seven victory points on higher ranks you don't gain any victory points you but you gain a really strong angel called hefto he has a two-time action like the whole game you can use it twice and you, mm -hmm. with these you have to gain enough victory points to make up for uh for your invest and mm -hmm. that's that's also part of the difficulty of the faction. It's not uh, uh, the, the epic weather. It's not only how hard it is to fulfill it, but also how easy is the the, the reward. Because interesting rewards are more difficult to understand as a newbie, and mm -hmm. are, and vice versa. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted so to show Hefto in the background, but I don't know where I'd throw him. Damn it. <laughs> Okay, I just show a few of the, the epic cards. Ah, oh, I have him. So who's, the right. who's the next question? The next question yeah, would be uh, Tim. Yeah, um, my next question, I think, might be for Maxine. Um, so on the Kickstarter page, uh, you have an overview about uh, the deluxe components and um, the difference between the upcoming retail version and the deluxe components. Um, Will the deluxe version or the Kickstarter version have um, the deluxe components additionally? So, for example, will you have um, the Demon Lord standees and the wooden pieces or just the wooden pieces? It will just have the wooden pieces. Okay. Um, because in the Kickstarter version, you're going to get one box and all the deluxe pieces are already going to be in there. And mm -hmm. later on, because we say it in the Kickstarter, it's an exclusive, but it's not entirely exclusive to this Kickstarter. You'll still be able to get the deluxe components through us or Grey Fox Games directly, but they'll cost extra. So um, if then you get two boxes, but you pay a lot more than people pay in the Kickstarter right now, because what we charge in the Kickstarter right now for the deluxe version is about the price that we're going to probably charge in retail for the retail box. And then there's going to be probably like, I don't know, 25 euros extra for the deluxe components if you want them. So in the Kickstarter, it's um, going to be both combined, but you're already going to save a lot on that. So that's okay. the plan right now. I mean, it's always disclaimer is always maybe there is a different way to do it better in production, but that is um, what we are shooting. Okay, thank you. Mm. All right, perfect. So I got another community question from the chat. Um, let me see. Yeah, uh, so I'll just read what, what uh, the chat did write. Uh, there's a little bit of uh, background for the factions in the rule book. Can we have more and also some background for the specific heroes of the factions? I think this question maybe goes to Felix again. But actually, actually, actually Maxine already said. Oh, nodding. Yeah, you, you, you yes, nodding you your head. Yes. Question. 
<laughs> yeah, actually, we will have we will have we will have uh, small backstories of the characters uh, and the, for the heroes either in the rule book or on the back side of the the, the screens. Um, yeah, totally yes. So yes, so there are little backstories. All right, perfect. Um, yeah, then next question from Dennis. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, did you make any changes to the um, money, the um, actions cost, or or the the um, for every faction? Um, how you say it? <laughs> um, under the factions, uh, like uh, twenty coins, ten coins, somewhere else. Yeah, we we uh, like Lance played this game a lot, mm. and uh, we we did this. We did two. Uh, the the coins now uh, are of course revisited and mm. um, be adapted. Due from the you know we we thought about maybe uh, half like like uh, making half of the coins like we we, we um, divide by two, but mm -hmm. as we develop the new system with this with the, with the, um, the money a coin track. There was no use for for dividing, so we just uh, uh, revisited all costs, and now it's it's way more in the area where it feels good. The Kuzan still has enormous amounts of, of coins. It's it's, mm -hmm. it's it's on purpose. All other factions uh, will have to find a way to between taking the treasure and uh, spending action, and also gaining coins from different sources. So it's we visited and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy how it feels now. We don't have too much coins, but not too less. Okay. So how is it to, ba how hard is it to balance all these factions? Because you have extremely. many. It's yeah. re okay. extremely, extremely difficult for this yeah. one. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to Lance's feedback. He will, he, I think he collected like uh, tons of it. Um, <laughs> yeah, we did a lot of playtesting, and 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 I should say, um, not to like, I don't, don't want to name drop stuff in here, but I know that like, um, like Peter Vaughn, uh, the the lead developer of uh, like Dwellings in El Eldervale, which was a huge Kickstarter that has mm -hmm. multiple factions with like you know asymmetric beginnings and things like that. Um, he just had a million dollar Kickstarter that he ran himself with his new company with Flamecraft. Um, like he kept on coming back and coming back to EOS over and over again. He was just like, "When is this game going to be made?" He's like, "I, I want, I just want to keep playing it and keep playing it and keep playing it." And he gave us a ton of good feedback of for, you know, balancing those things out and and you know like you know saying, "Oh, this just feels like it's just a he just a hair too underpowered here," you know, things like that. So, um, you know, we've got a ton of. Uh, I know Felix did a fantastic job and i i personally feel that felix got it you know a good you know 90 to 95 percent there honestly uh you know i mean it's just it's it's when you um really kind of dig into the minutia of each of each class of each little uh faction and each ship and everything like that that's when you and that's you can only really discover that through repeated playing the game over and over again and you start seeing trends and you start seeing uh, people kind of gravitate towards certain strategies. You're like, okay, well, maybe that's that's too powerful, or we just need to take that down a hedge. So, you know, people don't just immediately start, you know, steering in that direction. And I mean, I don't know, development of games. It's I try to say I help out with that, but I I, I think I'm I'm the I'm the blind leading the blind when it comes to that. There are people with much better brains, uh, you know, that that, that see. They, they, I think they look at a game and they can see a spreadsheet. Right, <laughs> they can they can they actually like track everything down, and my brain doesn't work like that. And and you know, God bless every single game developer ever for they are like the un, in my opinion they're the completely unsung heroes of uh, of, of board game creation and 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 uh, publishing. They can and see the metrics. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, they see. That's a good point. Yeah, they, that's exactly it. They see the matrix. You know, they can actually they, they see the ones and zeros where where we don't. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you and i think tim will be next for the next question so yeah um 
um, I'm just picking up the the balance balancing point. Um, so you did a lot of play testing um, the last couple months. Yeah, probably it's been over a year now. I think I played the game a lot of a lot of uh, time in the f uh, past now. Uh, the first time I even remember the lava loan. So uh, it's uh, um, very early yeah. uh, when I played it. So. You did a lot of play testing through Tabletop Simulator, and uh, especially in the pandemic situation, I think it was heavily uh, a heavily good tool for you guys. But uh, do you think it will be for future games or future play testing? The Tabletop Simulator will remain a household stake for you. It definitely helps. Um, due to the pandemic, we kind of had to go and figure it out. Um, I honestly don't know if we would have done that otherwise because there's always so many things we do and um, getting your head wrapped around a new thing and trying to figure it out always takes time. So um, I don't know, it could have been that we would have never done that if we didn't have to, um, but I'm really glad we did because this is a very powerful tool and it allows us to, do, um, to easily do tests and to easily change things without having to build a new prototype just to change one feature and test it. Um, so that's super nice. It's always, it's different from play testing in person, of course, and we love to do that. We usually always had people come to our office here and have the play tests in person because it's much easier to also um, like read the room and see if people are having fun. And because a lot of people when they play test are, if they're not game designers, they can tell you something's off or I'm having fun, but it's hard to, for, for me too, it's hard to pinpoint what exactly is going wrong or what could be better and how could it be better. But it's a lot easier in person for people like Felix who know how, how game design works to see, ah, I see this, this is really annoying that person. And if I change this, that that's a lot easier in person and you can't really have that with tabletop simulator, but it's a lot easier to reach people that aren't in our area, for example. Yeah. Like Nance. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> well, I'll say this right now. I mean, I mean, there's there's a lot of horrible things that have to do with the pandemic obviously but the fact that like we have gravitated our uh play testing over into tabletop simulator and doing it online you know getting people meeting on discord and things like that i know you guys host sessions uh we host sessions at uh gray fox games constantly i mean it's just it's it opens it up obviously to well the entire world right you know i mean I did a play session for uh, a play test for a game that we're considering not, and not talk about other games here, but I mean, I did one yesterday and I had somebody from Germany. I had somebody from Australia and I had somebody from within the U S playing the game with me, you know, and it's mm. just, and the designer of the game was able to sit in and watch us play. And if we had any rules questions, he was able to answer them. And, and there's no, there's no way on earth you'd be able to do that mm. uh, without, without the, the, the gravitating towards the online uh, purpose. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I love it. I love the fact that we can, and you can always get people, right? It isn't like, mm. oh, Wednesday, can you make it? No, okay, how about Thursday? Well, no, okay, Thursday, I can't do it. You know, and then pretty soon you're like three weeks out and you've got nobody showing up to play your game, so. And so of course you can send games to other places too, but then shipping, like we could send prototypes to, to the US and then they're, once they're there and people get to play the game, we've already moved on and changed stuff and put in new mechanics. And um, also, like if we send things out here, even just in Germany, because we're in the south of Germany, if somebody in Hamburg wants to play it and we send it there, um, we have to build the prototype and that takes a lot of time. And as we said before, mm -hmm. we're a pretty small team of people and like the three hours we spend on building a prototype, that's, that's just work we can't do on actually making games. <laughs> Yeah. So tabletop simulator is a lot quicker in that way. And also, I think that uh, with the tabletop simulator, you can play the whole game in total for, for for nothing. Yeah, you don't have to pay anything. And I think I also got a good feeling about when you when you have fun with the game in tabletop simulator, it's even better when you have it in real life, because you already know okay, mechanics, everything works, and then now you can touch the things and have the things spread okay. before you. So it's like yay! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's even. Even better. <laughs> yeah. I, I I absolutely know what you mean because at first I was, well, in Tabletop Simulator, if you can just play it for free, do I have any intention on buying it again? And then 
the, the board gamer in me just kicked in and said, yeah, I want to touch pieces. <laughs> I want to touch cards. I want to shuffle them by hand. And um, so, yeah, I, I know exactly what you mean. And it's something we have done before with Tsukuyumi that we put print and plays online for free anyway without having tabletop simulator because um, for once we think like board games is an expensive hobby and a lot of people want to know what they get before they get something so that gives people an opportunity to just test it and we think that's just a fair thing to do like check it out see if you like it and um, then if you do really like it you can you actually want to have it and you want to have something that is not that you didn't craft by yourself because usually it doesn't look that good and it's a lot more fun to have the actual game and that's the same with tabletop simulator and of course it gives us the opportunity to um, test it with people before we actually publish it so there's an early access kind of thing that people want to try it which is cool for people mm -hmm. um, to test it beforehand and it's good for us because we get feedback so yeah, yeah it's like kind of like, like a situation yeah Sorry. like a de demo or a preview so you can see oh it's not like uh, in German you say you buy the cat in a sack. <laughs> <laughs> you you know what you buy, yeah. finally. So that's that's very nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what I wanted to say. It's like a demo version what uh, the video game companies uh, have since aeons. So it yeah. could be seen like that for board games now. So that's. Yeah. And even with some changes, it makes it quicker in TTS. We already talked about it. So you can just try something out, some, some, something crazy, and then say, okay, it was too crazy. Let's uh, revert this back, and you're, you're back with the snip. So it's really yeah, the I developing played, process I really crazy. drives. <laughs> the, the crazy EOS version, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We played the crazy EOS. Oh, I remember. All right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sometimes we have crazy EOS. about a different game. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think I did like. Uh, with you guys, I did like 15 playthroughs on Tabletop Simulator, and I never played one uh, uh, one game twice. So <laughs> it did develop, yeah. yeah, yeah Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But re was really interesting for me as well because I did all the play testing all along for the last se seven months, and so sometimes really from Wednesday to Friday, where we have the, the usual play sessions, the version was different. So it was like. Okay, let, let's see. What's different now? Okay, okay, yeah, now I can wear this in. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's like from, from little things to like, oh my god, what happened? Okay, now I have to do like this. <laughs> but, yeah. the worst, but it was all worth it when I see the version we have right now. Yeah, and see like, okay, this one is really the best of all the things we did in the, in the past. It's, it's all the best things cut out of it. And now we're just looking like little streamlining stuff, like giving it the last, what's it called in German? It's the, it's the E dot. Yeah, so like mm -hmm. the last point to make it even fluffier. <laughs> More fluff. Yeah. I think the hardest thing on this is uh, if you have so many things that are interesting to put them all together. Because yeah. the version I played, there was there were some interesting things, but I know this is hard for the game actually now uh, to put in. So, but some things uh, are in. So. Yeah, <laughs> I guess it's very hard. Yeah. So I think people can actually tell you something about like interesting game mechanics that never make it into games, but then yeah. turn we, into something else. I, I want to say we we, we will mm -hmm. try to make something like um, a work in progress video about EOS when it's finally done. Uh, and mm -hmm. we show you a few of the moments where we had some interesting mechanics in it. So I'm already working on a concept about that and we will put that out when, when EOS is finally done with everything. And then, we, then you will see like the way from where it started to where it's gone because, because that's the next best thing about the TTS. It saved all the different versions before. So we can hop into every version and see like, okay, what changed, what was horrible, what was really funny, what was working uh, quite well. And so, yeah, we will make like a, a history video of that as well. Yeah. From the roll and ride to the asymmetric engine builder, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So uh, I think I have another question from the chat. Um, chat said something like, can I still make suggestions for the game or give feedback of my play sessions to balance out the game? And if yes, how? Uh, per email or Discord, even Kickstarter message, Please don't hesitate to send us feedback. Everything, every feedback is now perfect um, as we are in the final steps now. And uh, from the Kickstarter, there was uh, 
a really amazing idea of one play group and they said hey on the chronicle track you spark uh, negative events but why not spark positive events and like oh yeah that's a great idea and i just went into and uh, we now have uh, event cards I, tr I you know i just tried it recently like one hour before and it was brilliant it's you know this this idea was brilliant because uh i never thought about it before but it's so obvious that you can draw a card which says place a new uh, uh, angel to to the to, uh, to the island or uh, if there's already uh, uh, one slot left for uh, three slots for epic battles spawn a new epic battle and all this stuff in a or every player can, gains two shields I, I get the idea it gives a lot of more story to the to the game so this actually came from the from the crowd from the community from the supporters and i'm totally looking forward for all the new input like also tim said with um, the introductory game and so yeah please give us feedback and and help make this game even more fun because i'm looking forward to have all the input here don't don't be mad at me if it doesn't make it to the final version <laughs> i have to admit but right now we are very open for ideas suggestions um topics please send us an email i think email or discord would be best thank you very much yeah we read everything some some someone will see it and someone will like okay we have to to try this out or something and i think we can really say for sure we if it's not a really really crazy up idea we try everything we just try it for one session and try to play with it so nothing gets just uh, uh, made into dust or Android. something like that yeah yeah every, yeah, everything be, gets hurt there could be even a, an angel die or something like that <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly sure yeah there's there's plenty of ideas that's that's possible and as we are coming to the final version of the game you can see things clearly now when the rain has gone <laughs> i was gonna i was gonna do it but then you you, you start you came in perfect perfect yeah <laughs> oh the emails for the feedback i will put down in the in the chat um so you can see it mm -hmm. and uh, if this is a youtube video you're watching uh, it will be down in the comments a, so <laughs> it, no it's actually king at king games.com yeah uh, or king at king raccoon.com one of both Please send us an email or even you know join us in discord and have a discussion it's maybe interesting on this discord to have a question back yeah. to to get more information so i think discord would even better but uh, email is a perfect place. even the discord and link you can find uh, down below in the description of the twitch uh, of the twitch channel or the in the comments the link also is hashtag question mark um, <laughs> small nine <laughs> <laughs> all right i would be really impressed if you know that uh, out of the blue all right all right so uh i think time is coming close i think you have one more question from everyone and i think then we can wrap it up so dennis what's your last and most important question oh well, well, <laughs> I have actually two but okay <laughs> okay yeah, just press them in one <laughs> sentence okay, okay. <laughs> um so this Kickstarter is only just for the English or in the English version. Are there any plans for localization in German or other languages at the moment? Well, we're going to figure it out. There is, we do want to, um, I, I think we've stated this in, in a couple of places before, we do want different language versions, as many as possible, uh, if, if it's going how we want it to go. Um, but we're looking for partners to do this, um, especially for for other countries, because we don't know other languages and <laughs> can't do it by ourselves. Um, for Germany, we're not sure how we're going to do it, but um, we'll figure it all out to this Kickstarter and um, yeah, see what we will do. But um, we currently we're thinking there's going to be another crowdfunding for for different language versions but yeah it's um it's something for after the campaign because we want to do this first and finish this and not uh have it be super confusing and then once this is done we can um target the rest of the world so you have uh played it or build it in, in completely in english yes it's only all the English. Time. okay okay mm -hmm. 
there's 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 not even a prototype version in German because okay from the moment from the moment, we, <laughs> from the moment we invented it, we mm -hmm. knew that we want to be in close contact and close development with Grey Fox mm -hmm. Games anyway, yeah. and that's why we that's why we developed it in in uh, English then, and even with the tabletop simulator, we. Like one or even the second play session, we have someone from from abroad, and as we only had the English version, of, uh, it worked immediately. And even for every other game, don't get me wrong. I want to make this clear. I will develop it in English, no matter if we will publish it in German. But for development, mm. I will never go back to having German or both, for, actually, because that's what we did with Tsugumi. Yeah, but you know, just for development, this is this does nothing. Nothing has nothing to do with the final released version, but having play testing from all around the world and with Lance and and the the, the other guys Shane and Josh from from Grey Fox Game is so much more uh, um, rich in feedback that that it's we will only develop one version we can use and then make our. Um, a German version from it, and as we mm -hmm. are native in German, that this will not be a translation, translated version. It will mm -hmm. be a, a created version in German. Mm -hmm. So we will have we have a perfect English version already, and then we make a new version in German. Uh, mm -hmm. So there will be, you know what I mean. Like it's not it's not yeah. the same thing then. Yeah. With Tsugumi, we did both at the same time, which. I mean, could also work, but that just took so much time because whenever we made a change, we had to do it to both versions and it just costs so much time. Well, when you do it in English, it's everybody understands it. Not everybody, of course, but more people can be reached. Um, so that just makes the process of creating a game a lot quicker and easier. Yeah. So future games will be developed and tested and prototyped in English. Uh, and then we will do a German version from it. So don't don't be afraid, there will be German versions of our games also in the future. All right, nice. Thank you. Then I think last question from Tim. Yeah, um, Dennis just stole my last question, so I Whoa. just... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, uh, it's, it's okay. Uh, I just uh, thought of uh, another one. Um, uh, uh -huh. Okay, it's uh, um, uh, rules related again. So um, in the retail version, there will be no destiny die, um, but uh, with the um, the the um, the result of the die will be uh, done via cards. So how does this work out? I think Lance, did you play with this uh, the destiny cards, like a journey card and a destiny die combined? Yes, I played with the journey cards and the destiny die combined. Um, I mean, I, you see, I, it's so weird whenever you think of the game because I mean, I've like you know, as you know, Felix, I've I started playtesting it over a year ago now. It seems like I think that's correct, and so I've seen all the iterations and I've seen the game progress from a game that was really really fun, and then somehow progress into a game that was even more fun than when we first started out. And I realize that that, that, that sounds like a filler comment, but I mean, it, all the play tests, all the, all the feedback we got from everyone, it, it was the same thing about just how the game just each progressive iteration like made the game more streamlined, more intuitive, more immersive, more fun. And um, I mean, I like the Destiny die. I mean, I remember at the very beginning, it seemed like we were rolling it more. I mean, if I'm, you know, I mean, it's, it seems tough to remember going all the way back. And, um, you know, and it, there was there was more dice going on. And now, like, I think it's like, uh, and some people perhaps didn't like that as much with the randomness. You know, they, they liked a more um, deterministic game you know like you know, you're able to dis discern i mean there's still obviously random things with card draws and what have you uh but um i, I like the destiny die and 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 you know so is it my understanding of from from tim's question is that we're like there's going to be like there's the one faction that kind of relies on it the like the gambling faction that relies on being able to roll that die more often and what's going to happen with that if, if if a die is not included i guess is my question and my understanding, I'd like to understand that more too. Well, it's so, just an easy fix that we did with the cards. Um, oh, okay. So it's just within the cards themselves? 
it's yeah because we have a lot of journey cards i think um with all the time releases we're at 85 journey cards right now and what we're going to do with the retail box is that there's going to be a tiny symbol like in the top right corner or something and they're going to be the same quantities uh of symbols um in the same uh proportions as there are on the dice so you just throw a card and you check the symbol and then you can shuffle the cards again ah, so the okay. oh, well, but, but if you don't different. like rolling dice though i mean if you like rolling dice you gotta back the kickstarter then so if you're listening to this and you, i mean you gotta roll dice yeah I mean, yeah okay. so, so also, it was just my oh, and bold and fancy 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 dice hmm. So it was just my understanding. So you just draw a random card and don't play a card from your hand then? No, gonna, it's yeah. okay. like rolling a dice. It's ha it has to be random. So you just draw a card. It's like, oh, okay. I've drawn a demon. So. <laughs> okay. And so then you just put it on. Okay. All right. hmm. Thank you. All right. Perfect. So I have a last question from, from the community. Um, uh, it's a German one. So I tried to translate it into english and that it makes sense it's like um saying something like uh, did you ever expect that the community gets uh, so involved into the game like it is uh, right now i don't know I, who I wants to answer that <laughs> no i actually i hoped for this all the time as a game designer uh, I, i often feel like uh, i i'm a director for uh, human interaction And, you know, board games, it's actually bringing people to the same spot, having for two hours or two and a half hours, you having rules, how you interact with, with each other. But the main goal is always having fun and excitement about the game, no matter what the game is. And so hmm. now that we have this excitement from the community, like Tim and Dennis and Lance and people that are excited about the game, That's why we're doing this for, you know, that's, that's why I'm do, staying up uh, every morning in, in yeah. really like early in the morning <laughs> and say, okay, today I make this game even more fun. I make it even more exciting and let's try out something new that people might like even better than the first. And then there's Lisandro saying, this is shit, go back to the original <laughs> version. Yeah. <laughs> we, but in the most yep, he said that. <laughs> Uh, Sorry, I'm too direct you know, sometimes. That's, that's, that's what keeps me going. I like that excitement. And excitement can also be both positive and negative. Feeling having an iteration where you say, it's actually a great mechanic, but it ruins the game. That, 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 ma that doesn't make me a bad day. It's like, okay, I had a cool idea, but it doesn't work for this particular uh, game. So I just put it in my, in my folder for the next game. So there will be a next game with exactly this mechanic that fits better. So yeah, for me, this, this already like the excitement of the community and the backing from the community, support of the community, that's, that's my real reward for, for having three years spent on this and, and playing it and crawling through it. And uh, thank you very much for all this excitement and support and also from you guys, uh, spending your friday night for with us here <laughs> or or friday morning oh friday morning yeah, yes, yes. Friday morning. The plans, yeah. <laughs> from where yeah <laughs> and yeah if, if people want to get involved in the in the process and uh, talking with us please join the discord uh, and and have a talk with us because we're, we're eager to talk about and uh, listen to you and listen to your excitement and uh, yeah Please don't hesitate to to uh, uh, to come. To, uh, <laughs> uh, please don't hesitate to to contact us and getting uh, getting in contact with us. Thank you very yeah. much. All right, thank you, thank you very much, everyone. So I think uh, we're done here. We have uh, 19 uh, and three. So um, yeah. Thank you very much, Lance, Felix and Maxine for answering every questions we had. Thank you, Dennis and Tim for being here and asking a lot of questions. Thank you to the community that asked a lot of questions too. And if you have any more questions, we are, as uh, Felix already said, available on Discord uh, almost frequently. So text your uh, questions there or just uh, DM us directly. It's no problem. And uh, yeah, we are still excited because uh, the Kickstarter will end, I think, in three days. Three or four days? Three days, I think. Uh, four days to go, according to this. Four days. Yeah. Four days to go. Yeah, so perfect. So if you are interested. 
Yeah. 10 o'clock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At night. So everyone who's interested, yes. just visit the Kickstarter. <laughs> it will yeah. be uh, the link will be in the chat and in the comments, uh, bit bit uh, in the description down below if it, if this is the YouTube video you're watching. <laughs> and yeah, so we are already excited. Uh, it is already a very good Kickstarter, and we just yeah are excited to to make the game final and ship it out to the people so everyone can enjoy and play it at home. So again, thank you very much for your time, everyone. And yeah, thank you for being here and I hope you have a nice weekend and I think we will do the next play sessions and stuff. So cheerio everyone and uh, yeah. Thank you very much. I think that's it. Bye. Bye.